Again, hey everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Pilots and Training for the 2020 Annual City Virtual Grand presented by the Hardcore. I'm Michelle DeGro and O Hogan are gonna be your hosts. And I'm excited to be here with all of you today. I'd like to take this moment to thank the incredible sponsors who made this possible. First, a huge thank to the Hard Four, the presenting sponsor of the 2020 Angel City Versal Games. Another big thank you to Adapted Apps and the Training Hall All by All himself for sponsoring this session. So very quickly, as you know, um, Paralympic power, powerlifting is a bench press competition. We don't take the squat, we don't take the deadlift, okay? Only the bench press in its disabled body. With athletes lying flat and specifically the sign bench, and then aiming to a lower horizontal weighted bar from the arm length to the chest and return the bar under control to the same starting position. Okay, so I'm gonna lead you on with O, who's gonna talk a little bit more about the bench and maybe some techniques and maybe some drills. And if you have any questions to go. Okay, hi, uh, yeah. I, uh, this is somewhat new to me to uh, be doing, uh, doing a Zoom uh, meeting on uh, bench pressing. But I have, uh, and, and also I uh, have not been involved in the Paralympic uh, sport, so this is not very bad for me. But uh, I'm not new to strength sport, I've been doing it for, uh, uh, for 50 years. And uh, I've been competing in all kinds of strength sports from powerlifting to Olympic weightlifting to strongman to bodybuilding, uh, wrestling, uh, American football, you, you name it. If it was strength sport, arm lifting. Uh, the strength sport, I've, been, I've done it. So um, anyway, uh, uh, lifting weights, of course, has been my uh, favorite. So um, we are, um, I know there's a different, uh, different level of athletes uh, probably listening to this, so it's a little difficult, but, but the main thing is that let's talk about what is, uh, what is the bench press. The bench press obviously is an upper body exercise, but it's not necessarily just a chest. The primary movers for it would be the pectoralis major or the uh, group of muscles that are doing the chest muscles. That's the uh, prime mover together with shoulder, deltoids, triceps, also biceps. Surprisingly, biceps is a big, is, is a big uh, important muscle in, uh, in, uh, in uh, bench pressing. Even though you're stretching your arm, the fact that you, uh, that you're, uh, the, the, uh, the bicep still has a lot to do with your strength there. The other part that is very important to, re to remember in the, in a bench pressing, it's not just a move. You feel like you're going to be pressing the weight away from you, but it needs, it needs a good platform to do it from. And that platform involves the upper back particularly. And, uh, and, and in Paralympics, since you don't have the legs to be using the legs, you will be strapped to a bench. You are still have to be using your upper back and the, and um, you basically start to lift uh, becomes uh, very important to start with the upper back. You're retracting your scapula or your upper back, pulling it back and retracting your shoulder so that you go down and lay down on the bench. And then when the bars go to you, your shoulders are back. So it's, the bar is actually closer to you than it would be if, you're like, if, you're, if your shoulders were not retracted. And and you and you do the perform the entire lift that way. If when you're going to take it down, you take it down with the retracted shoulders all the way down to your chest, just touch the chest, wait for a, a kind of a count of one, two, and go again and bring it back up, and then we'll say rack and you put it put it back. That's essentially the competitive lift right there. Um, the uh, obviously the exercises you should be doing for it is the obvious in any kind of sport exercise, the most important piece of sport is the actual event itself. And in bench press obviously it's a very relatively simple event and simple exercise, uh, but it has a lot to it, had, had a lot to it, but the number one exercise to do, of course, is bench pressing. Uh, next to that would be to work on the upper back strength because you want to have that foundation so you can retract your back and have a foundation to, to lift up of. Then uh, uh, any kind of tricep work, tricep meaning the extension of your arm, any kind of work you're using for that is important. Bicep curls, even bicep curl is important because you, you're using your biceps. Exercises like um, you can do that you don't, if you don't have weights, it's like uh, obviously some type of push-up if there's possible, you're able to uh, 
maybe if you can't use your legs and uh, use your legs as support, you can lay, put your torso on a low bench and then they're doing a push up from the floor. Um, other aspect would be uh, doing, uh, doing kind of dips between two chairs. You to take two chairs and you put your hands on it and you kind of sit in between them and using your arms to pull yourself up. And then you can make it harder by lifting, your, uh, having the legs lifted up or have the legs touching the floor depending on uh, your level. But those are important areas. Um, do you have any comments on that? Uh, I want to comment on um, one of the things that many athletes or certain courses forget is the back. We focus more you know, on the shoulders, on the bicep, on the tricep, and the back is sometimes overlooked. And we need a strong wide back to stabilize the spine in your cases. And like um, Ola says, and sometimes we forget about the tricep, and tricep is gonna lock that bench in. Um, other than that, very good um, recommendations for back exercises would be um, a lion dumbbell rolls. If you like that, if you don't have dumbbells, you can use bottles of water or gallons of water. Each gallon uh, weighs about eight pounds and a half. Um, because we're COVID-19, some people don't have equipment. Um, line dumbbell rows or machine rows or seat them from your wheelchair for life with a resistant band, kind of like the Harper or the ones that they sent. Um, pull downs to chest, um, floor hyperextensions, a couple of Supermans. Um, and also you can have somebody hold a towel and they can resist on it and you can do some pulls while you're um, lying on your belly, hyperextension. Um, I'm gonna jump really quickly about power powerlifting rules. Um, they're very strict. It's not like other associations affiliated where they count everything. Basically, the athlete, um, if it hasn't changed, once they're on the bench and they're ready to lift, they're going to say, my bar. And they're going to give them a lift. They're going to say, start. Once that's locked in, you will not hear the word press. So that's why you have to make sure that the bar goes on your chest. Okay. It pauses. And then you're going to push that bar up. And then you have to wait for the command rack. That's exactly right now in power power lifting. Now, um, for example, I see um, Tiffany there. She's competing USPA, et cetera. So they like, you know, start, press, rack. You won't hear that word press. Um, and then the three judges will indicate successful or unsuccessful of the lift. That's another thing. Um, if it's not successful, they will say why. It can be the path of the bar. It can be the body position. It can be um, it didn't lock in or that person didn't um, pause it on the bottom enough time. So power powerlifting is very strict compared to those uh, associations um, or affiliations that you are used to compete with. Well, the rules are very similar to the USAPL mm -hmm. or IPF rules. Yeah. That's basically well, what they are, are like. Other than fact, those are for, uh, for uh, able-bodied athletes. So anyway, this is very exciting to be involved in. So I, if anybody has any questions, uh, now is the time to start uh, asking them. Because uh, without a gym to d demonstrate things uh, for you, we are basically in my living room. Uh, we should. Uh, we should meet the um, athletes that we have here. Yeah, you know, find out what level everybody is. Mm -hmm. and that would be kind of interesting if everybody got, you give everybody a shot, chance to tell us who they are. Mm -hmm. It will help a little bit in terms of uh, steering the conversation. Chat. If you guys have any questions, you can unmute and just kind of hop in if you like. I noticed that Mary Mary C. Hodge said to everyone that coaches can give the press command in para power lifting. Yes, this is what they do with Team USA. Well, they can. They can. Yeah, they the, they coaches. Can, the coaches can say it. Yes. Yeah, because I, I lifted the IPF and uh, uh, the, the judges don't say anything. Don't say so anything. the so you had to kind of determine, and it helps a lot if that coach actually say press or clap or do something to make sure because you end up lay, uh, getting the bench uh, the part onto your chest and you forget that you're supposed to take it back up. Thank you. I should have clarified that like the judge when I say, the judge, just, I just want to say, say um, press, you know, the coaches can. Thank you, Mary. We have a... Oh, we have another one. Hello, how's it going? Name's Carol. <laughs> There's one of our coaches also, so... Uh, yeah, yeah, anything to add to that? Or you heard what we talked about so far. Yeah. 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 I, I think it would be a good idea if each, each person that is participating maybe do a quick introduction of themselves. 
just quick say how are they involved in this thing. Uh, that way will give us an idea of what the level they are and so forth. Is that possible? Yeah, that's possible. I'm just going to look down the screen then and I'll help you, Ode. Um, we have um, our medical team here, yeah. Heather and Ashley on top. I'm going to go, we have a couple of allies here, which are not um, necessarily athletes, but are here to maybe learn or watch, but I'm still going to ask them kind of what they're interested in while they're, while they're here. So Rebecca Pyle, can you unmute and, and ask us and let us know why you're here and, and what your interest is here for powerlifting? Hi, so I'm Becca Pyle. Um, I'm a student physical therapist uh, in Georgia right now, and I actually uh, want to get into the adaptive athletic world um, when I graduate. Um, so I'm here just learning more about powerlifting in general and about adaptive sport. Awesome. That's great. Wow. Yeah. That's great. This is exactly what we wanted to have happen with Angel City Virtual Games is for everybody, athletes and, and for programmers and students and um, people in all of the all of the fields related to adaptive athletics to, to be, to become involved and learn about what we're doing. So that's perfect. And we have another medical um, Kelsey here. And how about um, Beth? You want to share a little bit here, Beth? Uh, sure, I'm, I'm located in Florida, and um, I'll be participating in Invictus next year and in para powerlifting. So anything I can learn, I'll uh, I'll take it. That's Great. awesome. Uh, wow. Have you have you competed in uh, in uh, in bench press uh, before? Uh, yes, sir, at uh, Marine Corps Trials and uh, the Warrior Games. Okay. Oh, Warrior Games, awesome. Wow. Where are you located? Uh, Florida. Florida? Okay. Wow. We have a lot, a lot on our medical team. Awesome. So happy to have them. So we have, we have me, is it Mimi? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and K Mimi and Katie um, and Carrie. What's up, Carrie? Unmute. There you go. Hi. Hmm. I'm up in the East Bay. Um, I've competed with AAU a couple times, and uh, um, last this year I wasn't able, I wasn't going to be able to compete because increasing muscle weakness was pushing me out. So, any pointers I can get to try to start lifting again? Awesome. Good. Great. Thank you for joining us. And um, Elizabeth, are you on right now? Are you or have you walked away? <laughs> She's got kittens there. She might be on mute, might have left there. We might come back to her. How about you, Brad? Uh, I, I'm actually new to this whole uh, community. I became an amputee um, in February of this year. Mm -hmm. And I actually just recently started working out again, but uh, I, I've been working out since I was 16. I've, I've never gotten into powerlifting at all. Um, I know it's very popular right now, and I think it's awesome Oats here. I didn't expect him to be here, honestly. Um, but I'm just uh, trying to learn as much as I can and uh, be part of the community. Awesome. Welcome to the community. So, Thank you. Brad, you, so you did uh, a bit of bench pressing uh, before you, were, uh, you lost your legs. Yes, yes. So I, I was bench pressing since I was 16 years old. Um, I'm pretty, th that's probably my, my strongest lift actually is my bench press. Uh, but I've never actually like tried to um, train like a power lifter. I've always just kind of just lifted to lift weights. Yeah. Well, now, now you're going to just start training for uh, making it to the Olympics. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just, uh, that's, that's, yeah, that's the next para step. Powerlifting is an Olympic sport. Not Powerlifting is not, you know, but para, uh, bench, bench press is, a, is an Olympic sport for uh, para Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, just, just learning awesome. all about it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Have you done any other of the acti activities or events, Brad, with the Angel City Virtual Games? Uh, no, this is actually all new to me. Um, I, I actually just got my prosthetic leg four months ago, so I'm starting to kind of get back out in the world and uh, do the things that I used to do. Awesome. We're thrilled Great. that you're here. Thank you. Okay, so how about just joined in here, 
Um, share sh share rng at aol.com just join the call um, are you on maybe you want to un unmute well maybe not okay some of these some of these are like they have their screens off but um okay so clayton frack just joined the call clayton we're just kind of going around michelle and ode and another coach there have just kind of given us an overview of some really important um tips and about powerlifting. and and they ode had this great suggestion that we walk through and see where everybody at was at on their um power lifting interest or journey or what what maybe drew them to come to the call so we're just kind of walking through the room a little bit so you Love can just it. say hi <laughs> Love it. i have never never done any power lifting so one of these days i'll have to get into the gym with you guys yeah very great. true clayton i've been after you like i don't know how many years let's do this <laughs> clayton, uh, clayton, have you done other do you do other para sports or do i do other para sports yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not an adaptive athlete. I'm a father, but uh, oh. I, I surf a lot. So okay. that's my thing right now. All right. Cool. And, and how about you, Mary? Hi, everybody. I'm Mary Hodge. I'm the uh, high performance manager for the Paralympic powerlifting program here in the United States for Team USA. Uh, really happy to be here. Great to see uh Angel City Games getting involved with para powerlifting. We're really excited on the Team USA level. Um, and certainly, you don't have to be a Paralympian to be in the sport. You can do it for fun and health and fitness as well. Um, so at some point in time, if you want to make your way to the Paralympic track, I'm the person to find. Um, but right now, I'm just here to sit in and offer any support I can to everyone. And really great to have you guys and hopefully see you next year at the Games. Hopefully. Right? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes, awesome. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being here, Mary. You bet. And Rob Belucas, welcome to the welcome to the evening, Rob. Are you at your Are you at your screen? Where'd he go? There he is. <laughs> He's in front of us. Fruit Loops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Fruit Loops. I hear Cheerios. I'm having funky, funky, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. There we go. Um, I'm a triathlete. I'm just uh, here to, I mean, lifting's always been part of my, my strength um, program forever, and I just wanted to hear more about the power lifting program. Where are you locating? Where are you located? In uh, LA. Oh, yeah, LA. yeah, you're, you're all ours. You're all ours. Right. Here at Baking, along with everyone else. All right, stop it. Yeah, I thought. I know. Okay, so um, oh, Lucy, is it Lucy? Is it Lucy Lamb from Angel City Games? Yes, it's me. Hi, Lucy. Just not here to checking check in. Out <laughs> yeah, well, I I always uh, train with weights. I mean, I used to bench press, you know, pretty decently, but I haven't done that in a while. So I'm just checking out to see uh, I can pick up any pointers. All nice. right. Great. How about you, Ashley? Hi, I'm just an ally here supporting Sue. I love learning about um, adaptive sports and supporting um, uh, program manager Camille Malconnect. Um, she's my best friend as well. So um, I love just being introduced to a new um, uh, community of people and um, being able to support in any way that I can. So. Thanks for having me and doing this. Yeah, thanks for coming. Always, Ashley. We love it having you here. How about Mark? Mr. Siegel. He says his mic is not working. Oh, did he say that? I'm sorry. Yeah, in, the, the chat. That in the chat, he might I didn't see that. Okay, Mark. Thanks for being here, Mark. You're always a great supporter. Um, how about our medical team? Um, are the is there any of our medical team are you interested in um uh, uh, para athletics? Um like Let's see, how about Heather? There she is. I had to unmute my mic. Yeah. Um, I'm a sports resident physical therapist currently in Oregon at um, Samaritan Medicine and Oregon State. So I'm just here to kind of learn more about the community and how to get involved. 
That's great. We have a lot of a lot of medical here. It's awesome. How about um, Carrie L? Unmute. Unmute. Can't, can't hear her. Oh. Maybe she's not able to. Can't figure out how to unmute. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> We, that's all right. Just type it in the chat. <laughs> How about Kelsey? I'm also a sports resident. Um, I'm located in Texas right now. And um, I have not had any involvement in um, adaptive athletics. So I th think this is a good learning opportunity because we don't really have it in our coursework. So I'm just learning more about it. Awesome. Cool. Hope you're here all week. <laughs> um, how about uh, Mimi? Hi, everybody. Uh, my name's Mimi. I live in Cincinnati, Ohio, and awesome. I work with the Greater Cincinnati Adaptive Sport Club as a volunteer physical therapist and athletic trainer. And we have a, I do a lot with wheelchair basketball. We have power soccer, and we're starting wheelchair rugby. Um, but I'm always looking for opportunities to, to learn more um, and especially about like strength and conditioning on how we can keep, keep our athletes moving and healthy. So I'm excited to be here. Nice. And let's see, we have the two Katie's to go. Katie Lucas. Hi everybody, my name is Katie Lucas. I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, I've been involved in adaptive sports in different ways. Um, classify, I've been classifier, which nobody likes when we're classifying, um, but that's for athletics, so not power lifting. Um, and then I'm just always interested with the lifting and conditioning, um, the best like grips or ways to teach people how to strengthen better and safer, um, because I feel like that's something from a PT standpoint we can get a lot better at. and. Um, in training our athletes. So thank you all. Thank you. And Katie Colgan is going to bring it home. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Katie. I'm also a sports resident. I'm currently in Boston right now, but I was in Pittsburgh for the last couple of years and I worked with the Pittsburgh Steel Wheelers, which is wheelchair basketball. Um, and I did some stuff with a wheelchair rugby team, hand cycling, and I did some stuff with the Mighty Penguins, which is a sled hockey team there too. So I have some experience working with adaptive athletes, which has been awesome, but these are like obviously different sports and stuff. So I'm looking forward to learning more. So thanks. Great. You got the room. You got the whole room there. You got the whole, uh, yeah, a lot of people, uh, a lot of uh, different backgrounds. Um, but anyway, uh, it, it's, uh, you know, I, any kind of strength training, yeah, you can, to get stronger, you basically have to be uh, methodical about uh, your approach. So uh, in a generality, I always think that uh, people that are working, particularly if they are comp competitive athletes in, uh, in, uh, in, in uh, the powerlifting from the standpoint of uh, Paralympics, since it's only one lift, you should probably be doing that lift at least twice a week and maybe as much as three times a week. But you can do uh, accessories during the, the, the same training session, depending on your time available. If you're available to train six days a week, you can do that, but you, you don't want to be bench pressing six days a week. But you can do, um, do a lot of uh, other, other things. So obviously, we were discussing that you need, to, you need to have strong arms, you need to have strong shoulders, you need to have strong back and uh, and uh, for, for to be a good uh, bench presser yeah so uh, to to the extent uh, you, you can improve your core strength as well that's of course important because you want to you want to have a great foundation when you lay on the bench and lifting that weight um, the type of accessories you can do would be for you could develop your training program into places where you if you're benching uh, twice a week and then maybe uh, uh, the back and shoulders and arms uh, the other days while doing some lighter, uh, heavy, although heavy on those things. And during the days that you do bench, maybe do lighter stuff on the on the accessories. But you can work out relatively uh, frequently for strength. But but sometimes 
uh, too much is too much. You know, like uh, if you you try to lift the heaviest weight every day, uh, you're not going to get any better. Your mind uh, will, won't, won't allow you to get uh, any stronger. It's very important that you uh, modulate your training, that you maybe start uh, with some type of a, uh, uh, you know, doing higher reps, light weight, and then as you progress through weeks, you start uh, lowering the reps with adding to the weight, um, and that you uh, go through a whole period like that and then start over again, because you can't just keep adding weight uh, every time. So it's easier if you add weight, but takes the rep repetitions off, that will make it uh, possible to do. Because our mind will stop us from uh, doing things if we're trying to do one rep max every time you come into the gym. Uh, and uh, you, you'll get very disappointed. You get very strong in the beginning when you first start training, it doesn't really matter much what you do. If you do something, you will get better. It is uh, obviously if you have a, pro, uh, a, a, a very well laid out program, it may be better. But I have to say that if you are a very much of a beginner and you haven't done this at all, anything uh, will make you stronger. And probably working in the range of eight to 10 reps on your bench press is probably good, very good to begin with. And then start to moving it down. If you start more going towards competition, you want to get into the much lower uh, rep uh, ranges, like one and two and three reps. Um, I wanted to add, um, keep in mind it's individualized. It all depends how your body responds. Some responds faster, some are slower. And also nutrition, hydration, and sleep recovery is part of getting stronger. So that's something that I want to um, point out. Um, um, Stacy, also, um, can you verify if Cario's microphone is uh, mic is working? She's the only one. Um, oh yeah, we didn't get oh, it. It looks like she's. Uh, wow. Okay, she's unmuted. I. It's going to be in the uh, the audio settings for your laptop or your computer, Cario. It's going to be my guess. No. Sorry, there she is. There Very she is. old, young one. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. If you can't hear her, but I don't think your microphone works. Maybe that's where the problem is, because she's unmuted. Yeah, it's definitely. But she's a she's a a, a she's an advanced lifter. Yes. Yeah. We can't hear you, Carrie. Yeah, she's unmuted. Or you can um, just um, you can tap. You want? <laughs> she's so cute yeah, yeah we can't we can't uh, stress uh we can't hear her carry so uh, uh oh, go on but yeah the, the, that's very important sleep obviously is uh, is very big uh, in the overall scheme of things but you know the, also proper spacing all the training so that you recover but um, as you get in better shape obviously you can train much more uh, frequently as a strong man for example you know, I would, when I was competing professionally as, as a strong man, I train at least six times a week. And each training session was uh, usually, uh, you know, during the week, probably like two hours. And then uh, on the weekend, they were pretty much uh, most of the Saturdays and Sundays because we're doing events and it takes so much time to set up and do them. But you can do a lot of, and, and we do the whole body, almost every, every workout, and you still, uh, still can recover. But uh, it's just a matter of creating that level of fitness that you can do that. But I think when you have a specialized uh, event like a bench press, it's easily measurable. You want to be sure that you don't overdo it uh, in terms of trying to set records. But again, like I said, in the beginning, if you do 10 rep uh, and, and, and start, uh, start there, you will see fantastic results. Yeah, the, the, the people that are athletes here that are going to compete uh, there. Hopefully, they will send in their uh, in, in in their video of their lifts so that we can uh, rate, rate it on Saturday, right? That's the, how the competition is taking place. Is that correct? She, I'm looking at Carrie L. She's okay. Can I talk? Oh, feel free, girl. Oh, hey, look! We figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you microphone was off, I think. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, it's not my computer. My computer's dead. I had to borrow the other person's computer, so I don't know how to work this one. Sorry. Technical difficulties. Hi, guys. Um, my name is mm. Tiffany Giddis. How's everybody going? I'll just do a quick little intro. Um, I am a T12 L1 incomplete paraplegic. And for everybody that doesn't know, if you touch your belly button and go straight back, that is where my back is broken. So uh, I've been paralyzed for almost 20 years now. And before I was paralyzed, I was a softball player, 5'11", played for a collegiate school. And um, didn't really do any type of uh, power lifting because that just wasn't my thing. Don't really have to power lift to be a softball player. Um, about 10 years ago, I met a powerlifting coach who is still my coach. And she's like, you have a great frame. Let's throw you on a bench. Uh, I fell off the first time I got on it because I had no stability. And in 10 years, I worked my way up to about a 190 bench. And that's kind of unheard of when you don't have any type of movement below your, your, below your belly button and you're a woman. And that takes time and effort and a whole lot of trust in your coach, but it can happen. And uh, it's really awesome. And like, like O was talking about earlier, the whole back thing, my back was like this when I started powerlifting. And now it's like this, you know, it's just, it's jacked. Like you're, if you don't want to jack back, don't do, don't, don't power lift. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're going to need a uh, jack back. That's for sure. Yeah. But it's great. And for any, um, for any person in a chair that wants to really devote their life to it, it's awesome. Like you, your whole world's going to change your core, your back, your arms, everything is going to get so much stronger and tighter and you're gonna realize that you can do so much more than you ever thought you could do it's great especially for women like it's just it's very empowering to be able to bench press more than most guys can it's awesome and you're not strapped most of the time imagine no no i'm not <laughs> <I'm> not working <laughs> no so <laughs> um, really fast. Do you want to share um, quickly, just because you're most likely a little more advanced than the other athletes or trainees? Um, how do you like warm up or prepare, or um, what do you do exactly, uh, like very briefly, when you're going to start um, benching? Training? Sure. So, so I like to take. Um, I'll either get on the skier, something that just gets my arms and especially my joints up here warm, or I'll take like a pole and just do, uh, yeah, the pass-throughs. Just anything that just gets my shoulders moving. Um, you can bench cold, but I don't recommend it. it you're, you're putting so much weight on your joints here and it, it's when, when I'm warm is when I'm hitting those numbers that I want is when I'm hitting, you know, the, the big numbers. And, you know, it's like, Oh said, you're not going to go in and hit a PR every day. And if you're, if you have that in your head, um, you're, you're going in thinking with the wrong mentality because every day is going to be, it's going to be a journey, you know, like, cause you know, some days you don't wake up in a great mood. Some days you wake up and your back's hurting. Some days you had a bad night, you know, it's just, that's just how it's going to be. But if you go in and you're like, okay, today was a bad day tomorrow. I'm going to hit that PR. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, some days your body is going to take a little bit more time warming up and that's what you have to do. The warm up is going to take you to the setup. That's going to take you to hitting those numbers you want. It's all, you know, it's good to do the warm up. Yeah, uh, uh, that's very, very good input. And, uh, and uh, I, I like to piggyback a little bit on that. I think that some of the things you can do is like uh, taking a, t a couple of small plates and do some uh, like rotators. Because if you really want to warm up your rotators when you're going to bench, because the pressure is going to be on your, uh, on your rotator cuff in terms of holding the, holding the weight. So you can take a couple of weights and you can just do kind of like these. You can do some 
to the side. You can do the same thing with the rubber bands or uh, as well. It's very good. So any which way you could do to warm up the shoulder girdle particularly. It's yes. not so much the other muscles like the chest and stuff that will warm up easily with the bench press. But the other thing is that's important is that even the bigger bench presses, the bench press, four, five, six hundred pounds, they'll start with the bar. I mean, yes. there are uh, 800 pound bench press, well, there are only one that ever done a real true 800 pound bench press, but, and that wasn't uh, approved yet. But, but, uh, but if people that bench press huge numbers, they start with a the bar. They start warming up just with a bar, no, nothing else, and do many reps, and just try to get blood to flow in there, in there after a lot of other preparation, like stretching and uh, rotating your shoulders and uh, working your rotators. And then you put a little bit of weight on and do a little bit more. Just you gotta you gotta ease into it, and then when you're good and warm, then you can lift heavy weights. Yeah, it doesn't matter if I'm doing a comp or if I'm you know just warming up. If we're having a bench day, uh, my coach always makes me do at least ten bars just to warm up, just to get that bar path, just to because if it, if you're just doing a, a a bench sesh in your gym or if you're doing a comp, you need to remember that you know, you get out of your head and just not, you know, because comp days are, you're rushing. You have, you know, so much time to get there and get to where you need to be and then do your thing. Sure. And I just like to remember, okay, I need to take that bar path down. I need to wait for my commands and go up. And I just try to keep it in my head. And so when I'm warming up, it's all about the bar path, all about the bar path. And so just keeping at the bar just helps me bar path, bar path, bar path. And I think a lot of people forget bar path is um, crucial when you get those high numbers on there. That's great, Tiffany. And, and thank you, Tiffany, because something very important that you mentioned is that it depends how your body responds. Some days you're good, some days you're not, some days you're in pain. Sunday you're excellent, your body doesn't want to cooperate, and sometimes we're just like, we just need to go to sleep. And we yeah. It's yeah. very important. I, I have a question for you, this, because you, you compete specifically in this event. Uh, how often do you bench press a week? So, I like to bench press when I'm competing. We will do it, it going into a comp, not competing. <clears throat> I haven't bench pressed. I bench in January. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Did you hear me? No, we didn't. Uh, we didn't get. Sorry, that. I'm so I'm so sorry. Um, if I'm if I'm competing, I'll go into it going into a competition three times a week. Um, okay. but. Before I bench pressed, I bench pressed last week, but before that, I hadn't bench pressed since January. What, what, um, what, are you doing other other strength sports? Are you doing other things? Yes, I'm. I'm doing. Um, I'm keeping my shoulders strong. I'm doing a lot of strongman. Um, just uh, just things to keep my mind more busy because I know I'm not competing right now. So I'm just trying to keep other things moving. As a person in a chair, I just want to keep my body healthy. Um, but I forgot how much I like to bench press, actually. So I told my coach, I was like, "We're gonna, we're gonna do more bench pressing." So I think you uh, put, to get better in uh, in bench press, you have to do you have to actually do bench press. I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's important to have all these uh, other things that are similar too, uh, and and you know you can uh, do the bench press with. Uh, in different ways also you can do bench pressing with other with other kind of bars sometimes just to get the uh, difference like uh, if you had a light log or a like a like for strongman you could do bench press with a log for example oh we or, do i love to play around with the log we have an 80 pound log and it is so much fun to play around with yeah. it is like i love any time anything i can do to lift yeah it's my you, favorite that, thing. are you doing that out, out, out of your chair when you're in the chair Yes, sir. So you, uh, you clean it onto your, from, from your up, up, up onto your shoulders and do it from there? That's yeah, just awesome. drag it up and just do a regular push. Yeah, oh, that's awesome, yeah. Because, you know, that, that's a good assistance exercise for a bench press as well, so. 
Josh has a question for for you guys. Maybe all all, all you three coaches can kind of weigh in on this. The power lift for powerlifting training. Do you always do high weight, low reps, or do you ever do low weight, higher reps for training? And which is best? Oh well, I think you have to do both. But I mean, you basically transition from uh, from uh, like during a cycle or training. You'll start with higher, 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 higher reps, uh, lighter weight, and uh, and then you start to, as you add weight, you start dropping your weight towards. Uh, so you cycle towards. George, uh, maybe a one, a one rep max after from, it depends what kind of cycles you're doing, but there, there should be at least eight to 12 weeks, probably a cycle. Probably, uh, I, I usually use 12 weeks as a cycle. So you, you may be doing a, in the first week or the 12 weeks, you may be doing 12 reps or 10, 10 reps, I mean. And then you, uh, next week you may be at the eight and then you go down and then you start going down slower. And I want to add to that, um, just, it depends. So if you're going for strength training, you don't want to do that more than twice a week and look for a PR every single week. You can go um, um, higher, um, lower reps, more weight, and then add a third week and then do lighter weight and more reps. You can do strength training all the time. So it's just different kind of training. Yeah, that's a, uh, the other thing exactly. is that you, even when you uh, look at the, uh, a look at bench press uh, just the lift uh, itself you could have uh, one week with uh, with heavy weights or well, one if you were to do it twice a week you maybe one day you do relatively higher weight and lower uh, reps and the neck and the other day higher reps and the lower lower weight and but you still do the cycle but you could within a week do two, two different things as well that answer your question, Josh, or? Um, yeah. Yeah, you can always like, email us or, or, or oh, and you know, during the weekend, you can help you a little bit more. Well, Stacy, I think we can start with the questions from the other athletes. I mean, Gerald's here also, in case he needs to answer some, or um, Mary Hodges. Yeah, I just I would say I would say it's open to the floor. If any any of you guys have any questions, please feel free. We have a lot of people here from the um, medical team. If you guys have any questions about that you would have for them, one of the questions I, that I particularly have is I I always ask. It, it's kind of do me, but what kind of injuries might you have had? have you had to sustain and recover from like what kind of injuries do power lifters the para power lifters have to go through and have you had some some that you've had that have been difficult i'm going to respond it's a, it's a, it's a, a, it's a, it's a for tiffany or for us or tiffany, I think. Me? I think, yeah i'd say like a, someone who's training, training oh um what have i had I've had a few, I think mostly like on my comp days is, what do you think, comp days? Yeah, I think comp days are the worst just because you have like heavy lifts back to back to back. And um, those, I think mostly I just have muscle injury or maybe like my, my back is sore. But I wouldn't, I've never had like a serious injury other than when I first got into it, um, I had a, <laughs> the doctors wanted to do a rotator cuff surgery on me and mm -hmm. I never let them do it. I went um, and just actually just physical therapy and physical therapy, and physical therapy, and I got my shoulder back. Um, but it didn't necessarily pertain to powerlifting. Um, I've never question. really been seriously injured. Good question. So at what percent of the maximum weight that you're gonna bench you warm up? 85, 83%? Yes. So, yes, okay. Yes. Yeah, 80, 85, yes. Yeah, well, in the competition. In the competition, yeah. yes. yes. Now, uh, the, you know, the kind of injuries you get out of bench press, uh, obviously, is, is minor compared to more sports because it's a relatively safe movement and uh, the typical thing that could happen would be uh, some type of muscle, uh, you know, muscle um, pulls or something like that. 
you know, when you get to very extreme weights, obviously, if you drop the weight, there could be injuries like that. But it's very rare that you have any serious injuries in, uh, in it, though you have had people pull their, you know, tear their pecs, uh, yeah. uh, stuff like that in, in uh, bench pressing. But um, I think that if you uh, approach it correctly and carefully, uh, it's not a high risk activity. It's a very low risk activity, in my opinion. Right. And the cool thing about it is you have the spotters on either side too, and they really do their job well watching yep. um, the athlete. So if they miss it, they'll catch. They'll yeah, catch. Inj injuries are probably more likely to happen in training if somebody, yeah. is, somebody is yeah. paying attention, you know. But uh, so anyway, yeah. I see there's a question here about how do I in increase my grip strength. Yes. Well, that's my ballywhack. I, uh, I do know a little bit about the yeah. grip strength. Even though, even though I'm a very old man, I'm uh, still very strong when it comes to, to putting me on the, on the grip. But, uh, but I think it, it, the grip uh, is very important for all sports, actually, and uh, actually for general health, because uh, the testing of your grip basically kind of tells you whether you have... A, it's very tied to your um, psyche, almost, I would say. But training for it, the key would be Try to avoid using straps when you're lifting any kind of weight. Try to challenge your grip when you're doing any type of uh, exercise. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a big proponent of just whatever you do, challenge yourself. And grip is typically the weakest part of your body. But sometimes when you're doing uh, like assistance exercises, specific, uh, particularly for uh, for like a bench press, for shoulders and stuff like that, you do light exercises. Well, when you do those light exercises, why don't you challenge your grip at the same time? Maybe using uh, thick handle uh, dumbbells or using uh, thick handles on your pulleys, rolling handles, things like that, that will, uh, uh, will challenge your grip while you're do actually doing other things. Because I hate to waste any time I like to, when I'm uh, working out, almost every exercise I do other than when I'm squatting probably has a grip component to it. But at the same time, I don't really train grip specifically. But uh, almost every exercise I have has grip component to it. So if that makes any sense to you, like using thick bars in lifting, my uh, lifting and uh, even on the, doing curls with a thicker bar, using fat grips, for example, because uh, Thick bars of certain equipment aren't available to everybody, but fat grips are inexpensive. They are grips that goes onto regular dumbbells or onto bars, and you have different sizes from, I think, from about two inches thick to about three inches thick, uh, and uh, those are really really good to use for uh, for for grip strength. And what's a little different with them also is that they are they are you know they give a little bit. They're a little group. Of, they are uh, have. Um, you know, they have a little give to them. So, uh, so if you put them on and you're lifting, you can't just like on, a, on an axle or a thick bar, you may be able to kind of grab around it, hold it without squeezing. But when you have the fat grips, you have to actually squeeze and that could add another component to the grip strength, in my opinion. Oh, I want to add that those that don't have the fat grips or can't get them, you can use a towel, you know, wrap a towel around this to make that grip a little bit um, thicker on the bar. Yeah. And pull yourself up using towels to pull yourself up and stuff like that. Anything you can do that will challenge your grip while you're doing other exercises, that's the way I would look at it. I mean, there, there's a whole, we have, we have like a wall of different kinds of handles that you use for training grip, but, but they are, and they're fun to use and they're fun to test and everybody's grip is different. So every little device you can use on your hands, probably a different person is stronger in it. But um, that's not where, that takes a lot of time and a lot of specific focus uh, on that. But if you're just going to try to get stronger, just use, challenge your grip at all time in your training. It really is what I've done. Well, Mary, um, Stacey, maybe Mary Hodges can answer this. Um, um, I have a question from Ali. How do they account for limb loss or extreme muscle atrophy? Follow an NSVI, for example, when determining weight class. That's more a classification question. I don't know. I don't know if Mary's on. I think Mary might not be here. Uh, she might have left. Well, um, Ali, that's a little bit more detail. What we can do is um, 
Oh, it's for Rebecca. Oh, it's for, for uh, Rebecca Pyle. Okay, as I said, what we can do is, um, yes, sir, Rebecca. Um, what we can do is, um, like, Angel City Sports can forward my email, and then I can answer that in detail, because we have to look towards the classifications um, also. Um, does that make sense? How do they account for limb loss or extreme muscle loss? Yeah, yeah that, that's a more detailed. That's a more detailed, yes. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth wants to know, following her accident, um, her neck is the weakest link. What can you advise to avoid injury in the neck when lifting? Um, child's, um, what do you call it? Um, fetus pose, tuck the chin inside the neck, protect the neck. Oh. Yeah, you can do this. And that protects the, the uh, neck. For, for inventing, yeah, you, you can love, do that. Do you love that helps, yeah. Well, it, it's, it's, IPF, not love. Um, but also, if it helps, it's an exercise to get the muscles of the neck strong. Yeah, but I'm saying uh, uh, rules from a standpoint of a rule in, in, uh, in powerlifting. Yeah. Because in IPF, you cannot lift your Yeah, head. but um, if your neck is weak, I would say don't go heavy and do neck straining exercise first. Because if not, if you're going to lift heavy and you're going to bench, this, that's going to put strain on the neck. Do you have neck exercise you recommend? Yeah, uh, I, 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 neck is really important in exercise mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But so if you already have an accident and you have been weakened, you should do exercises for specifically for the neck and in every direction mm -hmm. that you have. Mm -hmm. And you can do it very easily because you can do it using a towel. You can do it just using your hands, you know, pushing, pushing and pushing against it. Doing, but you, you just resist slight and do reps, and you should probably stay in the, uh, my uh, advice would be 12 to 20 reps in every direction, and, and, and with, with the proper uh, resistance, and, but you gotta remember, you gotta keep adding to it. You're just gonna add resistance so you get better and better and better, and you, you'll, uh, you'll eventually get back there, you know, where you, where you wanna be. And then if you email us, we can send you an HEP, which is Home Exercise Program, um, so you can tell us detail what is your injury, um, also, the rules, um, ha, um, they recently updated, so we're trying to get familiar with all this, like extra. That way we won't answer questions incomplete. And we all know with all this COVID going on, then, um, you know, everything's kind of like everywhere right now. But meanwhile, you can tuck your chin um, in your neck, so you can do some strength training exercise for the neck. Yeah. But I don't think you can do that uh, yeah. during, uh, during the bench, bench press in competition. I think that... Uh, you had to have your head on the on the bench, I think. Yeah. All right. So we've got we've got two minutes. Were there some uh, some closing uh, information you wanted to give Michelle or um, information maybe about the challenge Saturday or? Um. Well. Um, so remember to review um, everything that we talked about. If you have any questions, you can email us. I think um, Angel City Sports can provide that. Any videos. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook. Be sure to upload your videos um, and pictures in action on social media and the portal. Then join us on Saturday at 10 a.m. for other questions and answers. Um, we'll be able to watch those videos also. And opportunity to win prizes. Um, I want to thank the coaches. Um, Gerald um, came a little bit late, but he will be here on Saturday. He will be watching those videos too. For being here and sharing your knowledge. You're amazing. Oh, you're all amazing. You're all amazing. Um, thank you, Tiffany, for uh, sharing a um, little bit deeper on your story and your, and your journey. Um, yes, it's nice that we finally hooked up with you. I'm sorry I kept calling you the wrong name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, very good. Um, once again, we want to thank um, the Hartford and the Training Hall for being our sponsors.